Yeah, I think so. I was a bit disappointed at times with Foden and, and, and Sterling a little bit. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously De Bruyne played higher up and, you know, sat on Fabinho, then pulled in behind him at times. Just didn't allow Liverpool to get out through Fabinho, Thiago, and then took up some great spaces. And obviously he's an extremely clever footballer. And in fact, when Jack Grealish came on in the second half, if he'd have been a bit smarter, he'd have put De Bruyne right through towards the last 10 minutes of the game, but he took an extra couple of touches. So he was continually a thorn uh, for Liverpool. So I think both teams had one or two players, maybe Liverpool a bit more, that were slightly uh, off shade today. But yeah, I think, you know, these guys have set such such a high standard and some of Bernardo Silva's little dribbles with the ball were just, were just fantastic to watch. Let's take a look at how Stevie then rated we the Liverpool side, shall we? Ten across the board, was it, Stevie? No, oh, yes. definitely not. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I gave, I, gave Manny, I gave Manny and Jota eight because they never got a kick, but they both still managed to score uh, and Jota almost had another chance as well. Salah, had he not played that pass for Manny, he might have got less than seven because he was buying average. And it's difficult not to look at the middle three and, and think where were they because they got completely dominated, particularly in the first half. So that's why they all got six. I thought they were below average. Alexander Arnold, yes, was involved in Liverpool's goal, but I think Jota was probably the first guy in a red jersey. He'd passed to all day when he made that pass. So he, he I thought, was, was way off his best. Matty, I mean, you talk about a match saver because without his touch, Mahrez scores with the last kick of the ball. Other than that, I thought my team was good. Van Dijk, when was the last time you saw Virgil van Dijk passing a ball out the field? He must have missed Andy Robertson by 15 yards in the first half. I mean, you talk about somebody who didn't look themselves. And I thought Robbo was fine. Yeah, he was solid enough, played a great ball for the goal. Uh, so, yeah, I think, I think those marks reflect the kind of standards that Liverpool players have set themselves. Uh, and that's why maybe some will go six, but I think that's what they deserved. And Pablo, you're smiling. Do you think he's rated the players fairly for Liverpool today? No, I was thinking, Steve, you should give more credit to the right backs. Come on, do you know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, he plays for Man City. Walker, Apparently, six. he was hitting I'm blue jerseys all day. Six. <laughs> six. With a narcissist. But did you see He's the seven did, at least? Did you see what a Jesus, that's did, awesome. did you I see his 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 goal? I, I thought you were gonna leave it out. <laughs> did you see his 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 goal? <laughs> I mean, say no more. Come on. Wow. Uh, Craig. No, I, I agree. No, I yeah, agree. Go on, Pablo. I think you you've been good. <laughs> All right, he's been good. Craig, do you I, agree? He was good. I, I, I think I, I was just laughing because <laughs> as a fullback, you know, as a right back, especially, even Nadam knows that they never give credit <laughs> to anybody we always you know <laughs> they're always like that so at least you give an assist you're happy with that all right Craig. i didn't have a, did have a choice did i <laughs> maybe maybe it was something to do with the four balls that city in hit in behind them in the first half when he was <laughs> i mean i feel a bit sorry for my tape at times because alexander arnold's such a great footballer but he's not he's not a brilliant he gets himself in some really square positions. It's almost like he doesn't know the runners coming in behind him, but I, I just don't think he's ever going to change. I don't think that's you're ever going to get that out of his game. It's something I think you just have to live with. The other the other one was Thiago is um, obviously look <laughs> he's he's won almost he's won everything. He's a great footballer technically. But I think when you play against a team like City who some of their pressing, particularly in the first half an hour, was unbelievable, the intensity the quickness in which they pass it. And I honestly believe when Liverpool don't have the ball against a team of that stature, he can be a problem. He can be a problem because when he's on the ball and we saw some of his passing, it's terrific. But when he's not on the ball and Fabinho needs somebody, you know, to be in there alongside him, he's just not your guy. So he, I think he's more suited clearly to when Liverpool are dominating games. And this wasn't one of them, and I think it's probably one of the reasons Stevie gave him, along with the rest, a six. Uh, let's take a look at the final running for the two sides then, because there's been a lot made of it. The fact that there's uh, what's left to go and how Liverpool, uh, for many, have it harder. We talk about Man City now having to be very, very careful, but that means Liverpool have to be perfect too, Stevie. 
Do you know, I was thinking about this earlier. OK, here we go. And it seems, it seems a little daft, right? Oh, well, here we go. The difference from, be, from, from chasing to being on top is a completely different mindset. Right. When you're chasing, it's full throttle because you don't have a choice. When you're sat on the top, you've got to make a decision. Do you go full throttle and leave yourself open or do you try and do it in a, in a calm, organised, confident, clinical way? And so, in some ways, Liverpool can just open the throttle and see you later and get after it. Whereas Man City, as good as they are, there's just that little bit in the back of the mind that we're going, right, we, we don't need to go crazy here. We're, we, we look at the schedule and we should be able to beat them, 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 them and them. Let's take it easy. Let, let, let's just do it in a very clinical manner. Okay. Football doesn't you know, work you know, that you way. Because you know it'd find a way, wouldn't you? OK. You know, you know, <laughs> you know, Football you know, doesn't work that way. You, you, know, you knew he'd find an angle in how City would just sort of take their foot off the gas, just, just a little bit, somehow. Because that's what City do, isn't it? They take, they always take their foot off the gas, City, whenever you watch them play. Well, they were 14 <laughs> points ahead at one time, so they've certainly done something. What have they done? Uh, they take their foot well, off the gas. Took, they, they haven't took their foot off the gas. They well, they're 13 they're points. Off the well, gas. They, they, had, <laughs> they had some rope. They had some ropey results, and Liverpool hit, hit some form. So, I don't think City are taking the foot off the gas. But you know, some of these teams both are facing. Are, I think some of them are still sort of relegation candidates. So, as you well know, when you go to a team that are fighting relegation, or you've got them at home, they're scrapping for their lives. That's not always as simple as it makes out. I know one of their next games is Wolves. Uh, Man United's in there, but Man United are just cannon fodder these days. If they could only play, if they could play Man United every week, even Everton, <laughs> what the hell's going on? Everton could win a game, Man United pop up. Uh, if we look at the schedule, though, is a chance to bring it up again? Because I'd be interested to know from the City half, from you, Nadem, which games you're a bit worried about that could mm. prove to be problematic? Worried about? <sighs> <clears throat> All these teams, you know, they're fighting for something, even if it's just pride. So I don't think there's necessarily a sort of sense of worry because as is the case for City and Liverpool, if you want to win a title, you go into these games as favourites and ultimately you have to win them. And to sort of push back a bit against Stevie's thing, this is the time of the season now where, in my opinion, it depends who's playing first. Because before you know it, you say City might take the foot off the gas, but they won't be if they're playing second and Liverpool are now top and they need to win to go back top again. So, you know, you can look at the fixtures and say it's going to go this way, it's going to go that way, it's going to be tough, that's going to be tough. You just never know. And as um, as Craig was alluding to, you know what I mean? Everton, they thought, we thought they were the worst team in the Premier League and then all of a sudden they go and beat the mighty Man United. So I don't think anything should be uh, taken for granted between now and the end of the season. What's your gut feeling, Pablo? Can City see it through and go all the way, win the Premier League again? I hope so. I think if... If they just keep playing the same way, they, they will have a big chance to, to win the Premier League. I mean, uh, if you look at the remaining fixture, it's just, uh, it looks a little bit more easier for Manchester City. But of course, uh, in the Premier League, no easy games. Uh, they just need to continue you know, playing the same way. Same intensity, Champions League could be crucial also. Uh, we see if both teams go through. Uh, but yeah, as I said before, everything depends on one city. They're still top of the league, so if they choose to focus and keep winning games, they will have a chance to, to win again the Premier League. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.